my family and I have been so moved to see the huge support that Ale has had from climate organizations from across the world. I hope that one day we can repay you, really. It's heartwarming. At this conference, the, the most vulnerable are supposed to negotiate with the most powerful. He's not in prison for the Facebook post they charged him with. He's in prison because he's someone who makes people believe the world can be a better place. He's someone trying to make the world a better place. So we have not yet been defeated. But right now, all we know is that Ale stopped drinking water 50 hours ago. We don't know where he is. We don't know if he's alive. Um, my mother waited outside the prison gates for 10 hours yesterday for her weekly letter. They didn't give her one. She's back at those gates right now. I asked the British authorities to get us some proof that Ale is alive and conscious. I did not get any response. And I, I really, I this really is, want this to is deliberate to your disruption. Question, sir. Could we please I ask really, the gentleman really to leave? I really, really want to respond to your question. Uh, let's, if we can call this questions. One of the first questions was, why didn't you resort to legal routes? Legal routes were exhausted for nine years. Ale spent a full five-year sentence, and, he, and that wasn't enough. He wasn't spared. The man who is personal about my family, watched my father die while we were both in prison, me and my brother, and that wasn't enough. For the last eight years, Egypt has been going through a full-scale human rights crisis. Uh, we are talking about thousands of political prisoners held in indefinite and open-ended pre-trial detention, some of them convicted by exceptional state security emergency courts like Ali Abdel Fattah, held in inhumane conditions, the evisceration of the civic space, the criminalization of political parties, of media, uh, and the, un the, the blocking of over 600 websites, the uh, criminal prosecution of all human rights defenders. Uh, with um, uh, prison uh, charges, with uh, asset freezes, and with travel bans. Uh, there has been some positive signals over the past uh, few months, uh, probably in the build-up to the COP27 taking place in Egypt. We've seen about 800 political prisoners released and the president calling for a national dialogue with opposition figures and civil society. However, during those same six months, more people were arrested on political charges than those that were released. So that actually at the end of the six months, we have 800 people released, but 1,500 people arrested. The same kinds of violations are continuing as we speak right now. Because of calls for protests, there are random arrests on the streets, illegal searches of mobile phones, and detention uh, on political grounds, like spreading false information or membership of in illegal organizations. I, I hope that we can talk really the solution resources. He needs to see the British embassy. I'm hoping there is progress, but I... I... I'm, here in, I'm here attending COP27 uh, to raise attention uh, because officials are going. There are two governments here responsible, Egyptian government and British government, and there are other governments complicit. And all of these have representation here. And so I, I want to be here as a reminder to them that there is this man dying over there and you're all complicit and you will have blood on your hands. And that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm, we've known since we heard that Egypt is going to host COP27 that it will be a big greenwashing stunt. Um, I, I don't think that's become arguable now. I think everybody is aware that how much this regime is, uh, has blood, blood on its hands and that it's using this conference to greenwash.